It's all happening for a reason and Star Wars fans are beginning to piece the real story told within Ahsoka together. Brace yourselves because if you thought blue warlords and space wizards were enough, wait until you see what's coming. Something calls to me. Can't you hear it? However, this might be a little too much for some fans. There is a great disturbance in the Force. But the hardcore ones are going to love it. Let's kick things off with why the hidden threat within Ahsoka is far more important than Thrawn, how it's going to completely change Star Wars forever, and just when we can expect to see it come to fruition because, like many of you, I believe Dave Filoni's end goal was going to be a live action retelling of Heir to the Empire. However, it seems he's jumping way deeper into Legends than we initially thought. But to understand which direction the story is ultimately going in, we first need to understand what's being teased to us throughout the show. And it all starts with one character in particular who's arguably the most intriguing of the season, Balin Skull, former Jedi Knight turned mercenary after Order 66, alongside his apprentice Shin Hati, was hired by Morgan Elsbeth to aid her effort of returning Grand Admiral Thrawn to the galaxy, and it wasn't by chance he was hired over perhaps a bounty hunter. There's a reason to it, which we'll get into in a moment. Early on, Balin learns of Thrawn's whereabouts within a faraway galaxy, thanks to an ancient map once used by the Knight Sisters. But unlike his apprentice who saw this new galaxy as merely a new destination, Balin had heard of it before, Peridia, the location of fairy tales told within the Jedi Temple to the younglings, stories of witches, magic, but also perhaps something else. Whilst initially being on board for the credits, his attention soon turned to that something else, perhaps a part of the fairy tale he's yet to tell on screen, a power far beyond what you could ever imagine. In episode 6, we see Balin arriving on Peridia, still serving Thrawn, but the whole ordeal is becoming more of a job to him. It's actually his destiny. Something's calling out to him through the Force. Something far more powerful than Thrawn was present on that planet. Now, it's important to note here that Balin isn't dark side like a Sith. He believes in what the Jedi ultimately stood for, however, they were flawed. Peridia and the power that resides there could restart a version of the Jedi without the flaws that led to their downfall. And I believe this is Balin's primary motivation for seeking it out. Balin is exactly where he needs to be at this point in time. However, his apprentice Shin wasn't. He sensed she wasn't in on his plan of staying on the planet that she called a wasteland and starting again. And the realization sunk in that for the next part of his journey, he needed to be alone, which led to him abandoning her during the middle of a battle against our heroes, who are more than a match for her at this point in her life. And this is completely out of character for Balin so far. By all accounts, he's been a good master, he's caring, and he's likely been training Shin for a number of years. But for where he's going, there are no room for guests. Many aspects of the Ahsoka show had a double meaning. When Ahsoka confronted Balin on Peridia, their second encounter, he tells her that she cannot interfere. Many thought this meant in Thrawn's mission, and it did to some degree, but it also meant in his own mission, to find this great power, because it is a part of her journey as well. It's no coincidence that Ahsoka's there either. Now, the last shot we saw of Balin, he was standing atop of a mountain which was carved to resemble the image of three beings. It should have been three, but we'll get into that shortly. But these beings were the gods of Mortis, ancient beings that were said to be embodiments of the Force. And if you've watched the Clone Wars, you'll understand. But if you haven't, then essentially the three beings represented different sides of the Force. The daughter was the light, the son was the dark, and the father was the balance to keep them together. So this makes you wonder, is this the power that's calling out to Balin? To answer that, we need to dig a little deeper into what we know about him. The three beings resided on a planet called Mortis, outside of time and space, just like the world between worlds, I will say, which also appears in this show. See where this is going? Mortis wasn't their home world. They resided there because the father saw it as a way to keep the son and the daughter from destroying the universe. The son intentionally, the daughter not so much. However, if there was too much of one without the other, that would also spell certain disaster. You can't have too much of either the light or the dark side, there must be that balance. So they're kept away on Mortis, which was accessible a number of ways I will mention, but only if it wished to be. Now I appreciate it is a lot to take in, especially if you haven't seen the animated shows, but it's key to understanding where all of this is going. And the next part really nails it home, so bear with me. During the time we spent with the gods of Mortis in the Clone Wars, the father was weakening and he was unable to control his children for much longer. This leads to Anakin, Obi-Wan and Ahsoka arriving on Mortis. Now this was done intentionally by the father to find out if Anakin really is the chosen one, the one who will go on to bring balance to the Force. 
And to do this, he has to complete a trial where he has to choose between saving Obi-Wan or Ahsoka. And in this trial, he's going up against the son and the daughter, and it's said that only the chosen one would be able to control both of them. Anakin does go on to control both, confirming to the father that he is indeed the chosen one. And then the father actually offers Anakin his place to keep balance in the Force, to become the new father and effectively represent the Force itself. But of course, with Anakin's Jedi commitments and Padme, he goes on to decline. Now, during this trip, the son's power begins to grow, too powerful for the father and the daughter, and he actually kills Ahsoka at one point and accidentally kills his sister whilst he was trying to kill the father. It's a very dysfunctional family, just like the Skywalkers. Now, the sister gives her remaining life force to resurrect Ahsoka, potentially leading to Ahsoka becoming the one to replace the daughter as a representation of the light side. This can also be seen as after the event, a female condor named Morai, who appeared alongside the daughter in various depictions of the Force wielders, befriended Ahsoka and would appear to her at various times in her life. More than an animal companion, it's believed that Morai was perhaps a manifestation of the daughter herself in another form. Morai was also capable of entering the world between worlds, a plane outside of time and space itself, just like Mortis. Now, Morai appears to Ahsoka once again during the final moments of the Ahsoka show. Since she's been stranded there alongside Sabine, Thrawn's return to the main galaxy, Morai's acting as a message to tell Ahsoka that she is exactly where she needs to be. Which we see Ahsoka tell Sabine in the closing moments of the show when they both feel Anakin's presence watching over them nearby. Now, back in the Clone Wars, Anakin manages to kill the son due to the son losing his power, which was connected to the father. As the father kills himself with a dagger of Mortis, a sacred dagger capable of killing the gods. In the span of three episodes, all three Mortis gods meet their end. Now, perhaps none exist at this point in time, and this is just a statue carved into a mountain. That would therefore represent balance in itself. There's no light dark or balanced within the gods however there is another i haven't spoken about and that is the mother now the mother's not like the other gods she was a mortal servant and she was liked by the son and the daughter so much she managed to keep them in balance and generally made their lives more enjoyable but as mentioned the mother was mortal when she was growing old and she will die at some stage they wanted to keep her around with their powers the father was against it it was against the way of the force he said no the mother then went and drunk behind their backs the font of power a force nexus giving limitless power of the past and future a drink that the son once enjoyed himself many years prior but she didn't stop there she also bathed in another force nexus present which represented the light the pool of knowledge which the daughter once bathed in now long story short because she wasn't like the mortis gods she was mortal it went on to corrupt her she became known as this dark side entity called abeloth around about 100,000 years bb why? Now the gods of Mortis were unable to control her and her powers reaching far beyond theirs. The three gods worked to imprison her while also leaving their own planet to relocate on Mortis, only ever entering the normal time and space to ensure her continued exile, which they needed to do a number of times as she was desperate to escape, and often she would call out and lure unknowing force users towards her. In the Legends novel, she does escape her exile around the time of the New Republic era. Perhaps this is what's calling to Balin. Now, the Mortis arc in the Clone Wars cleverly follows on directly from an episode featuring the Night Sisters. Now, Peridia used to be a great witch kingdom, but it also has statues of the gods, perhaps even their home world at one point. The two seem to be interlinked. Perhaps the sisters derive their power from the gods themselves, or it could actually be Abeloth. And perhaps the reason the great witch kingdom is no more and it's just a wasteland is because Abeloth's escape is edging closer and closer. Is this the great power Balin believes the great mothers are fleeing from? A power greater than their own? Now I believe it is and the father, son and daughter aren't around to prevent it any longer. That's where Anakin comes into play alongside Ahsoka and possibly Balin needing to be on Peridia. A popular theory is that Anakin after death did take up the role of the father keeping the force in balance. Now the opening crawl of one of the episodes of the Mortis arc read, balance is found in the one who faces their guilt. Now Anakin actually did this in Return of the Jedi when he faced up against the guilt of Vader, saved Luke and defeated the Emperor. He also brought balance to Mortis during his time there on the Clone Wars and it was Qui-Gon's force ghost that appeared to Anakin on Mortis telling him that he believed he would face his demons and save the universe. Now bearing in mind the universe wasn't really in danger at this point in time of the Empire. The galaxy was, but the universe would be in danger from Abeloth. So perhaps that message from Qui-Gon was not relating to the Mortis gods or the Emperor, but perhaps something that's going to come afterwards. Now take this into account and think about Ahsoka episode 5 with Anakin in the World Between Worlds. What was this lesson to her? Live or die? Yes, and there are multiple layers to this lesson, interpreted many different ways. However, some of Anakin's words echo that of the fathers during the Mortis arc. 
The father tells Anakin at one point that he isn't either a Sith nor a Jedi. He is so much more like him, meaning Anakin. Now, in the Ahsoka show, Anakin tells Ahsoka that she's so much more than that because he's so much more than that. I'm convinced that Anakin has taken up the role of the father, but not only that, Ahsoka is destined to take up the role of the daughter, Ahsoka the White. She's meant to be there. She knows that now. That is why Anakin's ghost looks at peace at the end of the season, to prevent the return of Abeloth alongside Anakin, who, although he has transcended into the Force at this time, doesn't mean he's any different to what the Mortis gods were. They could change form after all, which we see with Anakin when he shifts into Vader during Ahsoka's training. Now, the one question we have left is, who is the son? Could this be Balin, who is being led to the font of power before taking his place alongside Anakin? The dynamic between Anakin and Balin would match that of the fathers and the sons. If you look closely in Balin's closing shot, the statue of the father is pointing to a light off in the distance, very similar to the light seen on Mortis itself. Or perhaps an outside theory here that it could be Sabine. Ahsoka feared the darkness within her before, which goes on to tell us that Sabine does have the potential to be dangerous with the dark side. Perhaps there's also a reason that she's there too, and Balin's there because he's being drawn in by Abeloth. Just because the title of the sun represents a male, it doesn't mean Sabine couldn't take up the role. It's to represent the dark side of the force after all, not a certain gender. And although Sabine is one of the good guys, the dark side of the force isn't bad itself. It's the characters that use it to do bad things. Right, so I know that this was a pretty big one and it's pretty intense. Now, I'm sure Filoni will have it play out over a number of years, slowly in many different projects to make it more palatable for the regular viewers. This side of the story could reach the resolution sooner than later as we get into the return of the Empire with Thrawn. But it's there now to sow the seeds, and I'd imagine it'd be picked up after the events of the sequels, with perhaps both Anakin and Ahsoka returning as these godlike beings to face off against Avaloth and save the universe from destruction, which to be fair would be something way too big for them to cram in between the original trilogy and the sequel trilogy. As always guys, let me know your thoughts down below. Remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you want to catch more. I'll see you in the next one. May the Force be with you.